As a kid, cooking seemed like magic. My mom would dump spices and ingredients together, throw them in an oven, and boom, Thanksgiving dinner. But enough is enough. It's time to move past PB&Js and bowls of cereal. It's time I learned to cook. So let's get some practice by playing some cooking video games. So many games have included cooking over the years like the Paper Mario series, and in recent years we've seen cooking pop up in more games like Sonic Frontiers, Animal Crossing, and Zelda Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild has a much more free-form style of cooking. You select up to five items that you can hold, and by throwing them into a pot with a fire, you start cooking. Sometimes you get actual garbage, but if you manage to find a good combination, then you'll get a food item. What makes this cooking system great is that you can add your own flair to the recipes. For example, by cooking one apple, you get simmered fruit, which heals a single heart. But by putting five apples into the pot, you get a big serving of simmered fruit that restores five hearts. If you combine a spicy pepper with an apple, you get spicy simmered fruit that not only restores two hearts, but also gives you cold resistance. If you swap the apple for a Hillian shroom, you get a spicy fruit and mushroom mix, which also restores two hearts and provides cold resistance, but this cold resistance is only low level, whereas the spicy simmered fruit provides a stronger mid-level cold resistance. So there is some nuance involved with cooking in this game. It's fun just combining stuff and seeing what works, which is what cooking is all about. Breath of the Wild has a great cooking system, but this is a newer game. I think it's only right that we show some respect and talk about one of the OGs. Cooking Mama is one of the most iconic series in the entire cooking game genre. The series began in 2006 with its first game simply titled Cooking Mama, developed by Office Create for the Nintendo DS. There have been several games in the series as well as a handful of spin-offs with the titular character Mama doing other things besides cooking like gardening, camping, and babysitting. But obviously she's most well known for cooking. The Cooking Mama games are basically mini game collections where you perform the steps necessary to prepare food by doing different mini games. I was surprised by how in-depth the food making process is. You do everything from buttering pans to seasoning meat to separating egg whites from the yolks. While they don't show everything, the games actually do a somewhat decent job at showing you the key steps in cooking food. I decided to try the mobile game since I didn't have any of the console or handheld games on hand, and man that was a terrible idea. The mobile game Cooking Mama Let's Cook is good enough, but the issue is that it feels like I can't go more than a minute without the game asking me if I want to watch an ad. And sometimes they'll just skip the pleasantries and make me watch an ad. I don't see myself playing too much of this game. When I get a chance, I'll have to pick up some of the older games in the series and play those. Because when it comes to cooking games, you can't go wrong with Mama. Cooking Mama has some pretty in-depth cooking mechanics. So, if you're a dum-dum and you want the exact opposite of complexity, you can try Kingdom Hearts' cooking system. Square Enix's 2019 game Kingdom Hearts 3 has a cooking system that at first glance seems a bit out of place in a game like this, but it manages to incorporate it well by tying the cooking minigames together with the Ratatouille movie. Remy, aka Little Chef, controls Sora's hair to make him cook much like he does in the movie. There are a decent amount of different recipes you can find and cook up, none of which which I'll try to pronounce. To cook the food, first you'll need to find ingredients hidden all over the different worlds. You cook the food by playing these little mini games. These dishes can't be eaten on their own, you have to go the whole nine yards and enjoy a full meal with appetizers and desserts, which means you'll have to do a few of these mini games. None of them are really hard, although you might want to fail since some of them are pretty hilarious when you mess up. A lot of them also don't make any sense. Like apparently just by cracking an egg, Sora is able to make a whole chocolate mousse. I think you missed a couple steps there, Square. The food gives you different buffs to your stats as you'd expect, so there is a pretty good reason to mess around with the cooking system. I'm not a big fan of this system, but it is a nice palate cleanser every now and then. How about we look at something even more simple than Kingdom Hearts, that being Cookie Clicker. In this browser game, you click on a cookie to bake cookies. And somehow it's the most addicting game ever. Ortale's Cookie Clicker was a phenomenon back in 2013. Hard to believe it's been 10 years since this game came out. By clicking on this big cookie, you bake cookies, which you can then use to buy things that'll make more cookies automatically, like grandmas and cookie farms. 
and then you use the cookies that you got from them to make even more cookies with crazy stuff like cookie banks and cookie temples. Your cookies start off as an influential but ultimately harmless snack. However, slowly but surely, your cookies begin to take over the world and eventually reality itself to the point where most living creatures on the planet have traces of cookies in their DNA. Okay, we're getting a little bit too deep here. Let's, let's get back to the gameplay. This is a pretty simple game. All you do for the most part is click on a cookie and eventually you build up your business to the point where you're generating hundreds of thousands of cookies per second without even clicking on anything. If you haven't played this game, you'd probably think that this is the dumbest game ever. But if you actually play the game, you'll realize yeah, this is the dumbest game ever. Except now, I've wasted 10 hours of my life, and for some reason, I really want to waste 10 more hours. Despite being incredibly simple, there is quite a bit of depth to this game. Like, you can buy stuff like grandmas to bake cookies for you, which will increase the total amount of cookies per second you're generating, but you could instead wait a bit and save up your cookies to buy a cookie farm, which can make cookies at an even faster rate. There's also upgrades you can give to your various facilities, so you have to choose which option is the most optimal, buying a new facility or upgrading your older facilities that are already producing a ton of cookies. And those facilities can also impact how efficient your other facilities are as well. Then you've got sugar lumps and prestige and ascension. It's a lot of stuff. I had to put this game down just because it was wasting so much of my time. But it is definitely an interesting game. This isn't a game you play actively, it's something you leave on in the background and come back to from time to time. But the game does reward you for playing actively if you do decide to do that, thanks to the golden cookies. These things randomly spawn every so often, and they're pretty useful because they provide different bonuses like free cookies and frenzies that give your cookies per second a big multiplier for a short time. This game actually does have a number of mechanics. Whether you think Cookie Clicker is a really fun game or a complete waste of time, it helped popularize the idle game genre, so at the very least, I gotta give it its credit for that. Let's move away from idle games and instead go for a cooking game that's super involved, like Papa's Pizzeria. The Papa's Ia series is a pretty popular cooking game series developed by Flipline Studios. I had heard about these games for a while, but I never really gave them a shot. I also never knew just how many of these games there are. You've got Papa's Pasteria, Papa's Donutteria, Papa's Cheeseria, The Bakeria, Sushiria, Scooperia, Mocheria, Cluckeria, and those are just the games that came out in the last 10 years of Ia. You've got Papa's Burgeria, Taco Mia, Freezeria, Pancakeria, Wingeria, Hot Dogeria, Cake -cup 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 Cakeria, and that's not even counting all of the mobile ports and updated versions. For this video, I decided to check out the first game in the series, Papa's Pizzeria. This is an old Flash game from 2007, where you play as an employee at a pizza restaurant. You have to take the orders of the customers, put the toppings on, cook the pizza, and then use a pizza wheel to cut the pie into neat little slices. You're graded on how well you made the pizza to the customer's order and how fast you're able to get the order done. Providing better pizzas and better service leads to customers giving you bigger tips. The only thing tips do, to my knowledge, is increase your rank, which unlocks new customers that'll come to your store. It's pretty mindless in the beginning, but after the first week or so, it can start to get hectic, as tons of people will start coming in at once. There are some customers who have pretty regular orders, like my guy Kingsley, who likes a whole pepperoni pizza, or Maggie, who likes a pizza that's half green peppers and half olives. But then, you've got the people like Mindy, who deserve jail time because she wants a pizza that's half cheese, half anchovies, and then mushrooms on one half of the half with anchovies. Uh, what is her problem? This is the first game in the series, so it's pretty simple, but it is engaging enough, if a bit repetitive. I was curious about the other games in the Papa's Ia series, and I found out that there's actually a deluxe version of Papa's Freezeria on Steam. It has a 99% overwhelmingly positive review rating on Steam, so I have to check this game out at some point, probably in a future video. Another game with overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam that includes cooking is Concerned Apes 2016 Farming Sim 
Stardew Valley. Stardew Valley has a very expansive list of recipes for you to cook. This is a farming game, so a cooking system fits perfectly. You have all sorts of crops and dairy products at your disposal, so there's plenty of room to get creative in the kitchen. You get access to cooking after upgrading your house for the first time, as the upgraded farmhouse has a kitchen in it with a fridge and a stove. Anything you have stored in the fridge can automatically be used as cooking ingredients without having to be in your inventory, which is a great quality of life feature. Like a lot of other games with cooking mechanics, the various foods all have unique buffs and bonuses to help you out. Recipes are actually somewhat rare in Stardew Valley as many of them you can only get by befriending villagers. Eventually they'll trust you enough to show you their secret recipe for um strange buns. A lot of recipes are also only available by watching the hit TV show The Queen of Sauce and there are some you can buy as well. All in all, this is a good cooking system in an already really good game. Another good game with cooking mechanics added in is Minecraft. Minecraft, released in 2011 and developed by Mojang, despite its simplistic appearance, has a pretty in-depth food system. Back in the early days of Minecraft, food was pretty simple. If you ate a pork chop, you would instantly gain hearts. However, in the landmark Beta 1.8 adventure update, Minecraft experienced a major overhaul. One of the biggest was the new hunger system. Instead of instantly restoring hearts, food would restore your hunger meter, and having a higher hunger meter would increase your health over time. Raw food does restore your hunger, but it isn't nearly as filling as cooked food. There aren't any stoves or grills in Minecraft. Instead, everything is cooked in a furnace. All you have to do to cook stuff is throw some fuel into the furnace, like coal or wood planks. If you're vegan or you just don't like meat, there are a couple of other food options too, like mushroom stew and baked potatoes. Unlike meat, items like soups, pies, and bread can just be crafted in your crafting menu without having to cook them first, which can make them more handy in certain situations. Mushroom stew can be crafted with a red mushroom, brown mushroom, and a bowl, and pumpkin pie is crafted with a pumpkin, sugar, and an egg. Cooking actually has a funny history in Minecraft, since back in the day, baking a cake was something of an accomplishment. Cake has a much more complex crafting recipe as you need three buckets of milk, two sugar, an egg, and three pieces of wheat. You'd need nine iron to craft three buckets, and you'd also have to smelt them first. You'd need to find a cow to milk. You'd need to get lucky and find sugar cane growing in the world to craft the sugar. You'd need to spend time farming to grow the wheat, and you'd need to find a chicken and hope it lays an egg. You really had to go through the whole process to make this thing. Nowadays, it's easier since the items you need are generally more available with multiple ways to get your hands on them. Now, given that you had to do all of that to make this cake, you'd expect the best food item in the game, right? Well, you'd be right, except not really. Cake is cute. It does fill you up a lot if you eat the whole thing, but the strange thing about cake is that instead of just being an inventory item that you eat like usual, it's an actual block you place in the world. You can even put a candle on the thing, which is pretty neat. Neat is the best way I'd describe cakes. They're cool since you can use them for decoration and you can share it with your friends, but it isn't particularly convenient. Though, to be fair, cake isn't supposed to be convenient. It's supposed to be something that you eat on special occasions, at least an extravagant cake like this one. There are some extravagant foods you can eat in Square Enix's 2016 game Final Fantasy XV too. In this game, there are safe havens where you can camp for the night. Camping is where you retain all of the EXP you got for the day and rest up, but more importantly, it's where you can cook food. Well, you don't actually cook food because you're a rich cool kid who ain't got time for that, but you do have a super awesome chef named Ignis in your party who knows how to make a fine selection of dishes, which can give bonuses to your stats for the following day. If you have the ingredients, there's a ton of stuff you can have for dinner, and all of the 3D models for the food look really good, whether it be a hearty, tender roast stew, some tasty, crispy fish, some delicious looking rib steak, or some cup noodles. No, seriously, the actual cup noodles brand of noodles. I don't know what it is, but this game is like the cup noodles ambassador. Gladiolus, your bodyguard, even has this whole spiel that's like an in-game commercial for the stuff. Any food you make tastes better when you use good ingredients, right? Then if you take something already delicious like cup noodles and add in the finest, freshest ingredients, what do you get? The ultimate flavor experience. It's perfection. And some say you can't top that, but I say you never know if you never try. 
All that's left is to make our noodle dream a reality. There's even a side quest for it. It would be really cringe if it wasn't done in such a blatant and hilariously over the top way. But guess what? Cup noodles isn't the only weird product placement involving cooking because Ignis serves food at camp on these Coleman brand plates. You sit in these Coleman brand seats and you guys sleep inside this Coleman brand tent. Final Fantasy 15 really does exist, doesn't it? Admittedly, cooking and by extension, camping is one of my favorite parts of this game. Like after we got done eating dinner, Ignis told me his glasses got snatched up by a chocobo, so we had to go look for them in the middle of the night. There's all sorts of cool little moments that can happen, and even some of the background stuff that happens while you're camping, like Noctis recording Prompto trying to act all cool with this gun only for Prompto to fall and hit his tailbone. From the guys having fun on a mobile game together, playing cards, or just enjoying food together, you really get the sense that all of these guys in your party are good friends. All of this talk about cooking is making me hungry, so I think I might end this video and fix myself something to eat. In honor of Final Fantasy XV, I think I'll make an exquisite serving of cup noodles. It may not be the most complex dish, all you gotta do is boil water, but everyone has gotta start somewhere. So, to everyone watching, go look up some recipes, add your own personal flair to your cooking, and enjoy a meal with some good friends.